And then oh, it's so cute. I can't do it. <laughs> That's where all of your frequencies come from because your heart beats. Your brain is a receiver and it transmits those electrical <laughs> impulses from your heart to create other types of stimulus to move other types of matter. This is what manifestation is all about. Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. I'm Em. And I'm Liv. And we're, we're your meta sidekicks. So today in this video, we are going to be talking about manifestation and the law of attraction. And we are going to be discussing what it is, how you can do it, and we're going to make our vision boards to help manifest our goals for our company. Yeah, so let's get into the video. Let's talk about what it is. So manifestation is a very popular topic, but we're gonna give you the science behind it. Manifestation is defined as an event or an action or an object that clearly shows or embodies something, especially a theory or an abstract idea. So what does that mean? Because what you're saying is very vague. Well, manifestation is an event, action, or object that clearly embodies something so like I could say that this candle is a manifestation, mm -hmm. but also I can say that it's not a candle because technically it's, it could be not a candle to somebody else. It's manifesting oh. itself as a candle. That's why you're confused because yeah. it really doesn't have a, a <laughs> good explanation. That was literally like you coming in, like during <laughs> philosophy class, one of the first things my philosophy teacher was like, this desk is not a desk. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's not. And it's I'm gonna prove it to you by the end of the semester. <laughs> manifesting itself as a desk because of the social things that you've been taught to understand it as a desk. So that's why you're confused when I'm reading the definition of manifesto because you're manifesting the like, manifestation definition. <laughs> no. Emily doesn't know anything about manifestation. She I, just I know knows okay, about no. it. I know the Western thought of manifestation oh, yeah. of like, you saying what you want to be in the future in present tense, and then it will happen. Yeah. That's what I know as manifestation, and probably everyone else knows as manifestation. You're describing things that just like aren't existing, <laughs> but are existing. Well, but that's what manifestation is, is you're, ex you're literally asking for things that don't already exist to come into existence. That is manifestation. That's why you're like, what does the definition mean? It's be <laughs> the definition <laughs> literally says as an event, action, or object that clearly shows or embodies something, especially a theory or an abstract idea. Manifestation is 100% a theory and it is definitely an abstract idea. So like, that's why you're confused because I'm trying to define something that's already abstract in and of itself. <laughs> if you're gonna use this in a sentence, you are walking around the park and then all of a sudden you hear cuckoo, cuckoo, pigeon noises, pigeon noises. And then you turn around and there's a little tiny pigeon on the ground. You're like, you seem to manifest out of nowhere, young sir. And he's wearing a top hat. Uh, that would be how you use manifestation in a, in a sentence. Cause it came out of nowhere. It manifested from somewhere within the cosmos. You describing this candle as a manifestation of a candle is blows my mind, my dude. Well, again, like maybe that's not a candle in someone else's reality. We're gonna get into the weird <laughs> nitty gritty stuff in our podcast, so you should tune into that. This is just like caressing the surface of manifestation. So unsurprisingly, the ideas of manifestation did not come from the West. They came from everywhere but America. Yeah. But in the early 19th century, a movement called the New Thought Movement blew up everywhere. And that is where- Oh, that's the mind over body type thing? Yes, Phineas Quimby is the one that had the that's mind over- I know, isn't it a term? <laughs> uh, so that movement started in the late 19th century and that is what blew the minds, literally and figuratively, of the American population with the idea of manifestation or the law of attraction, which is, they use those things interchangeably now. Oh. Yeah. Are there, is there a difference between the law of attraction? Isn't the law of attraction, the energy you put out to the world attracts similar energy? It would be, if you want to manifest something, you have to use the law, the law of attraction to mm -hmm. do it. Got you. Manifesting is saying something came out of thin air, basically, <laughs> whereas the law of attraction is the reason it came seemingly out of thin air. So the New Thought Movement was thought to have been spurred by a man named Phineas Quimby, and there was another uh, Finnish man, I believe too, but I don't remember his name. 
but Phineas Quimby was a U.S. citizen in the early 19th century and at a young age he was diagnosed with tuberculosis and at that point if you don't know what tuberculosis is, it's a bacterial infection. It usually infiltrates your lungs and can go to other organs, but people back then, they didn't have a cure, antibiotics, so they would die. Well, Phineas Quimby, being young, said, well, I may as well as make the best of this. And he picked up the hobby of horseback riding. And he said that when he would go horseback riding, he didn't feel like he was diseased or sick and he felt healthy. He ended up overcoming his tuberculosis, which was unheard of because it's the 19th I'm century <laughs> in America. And he went on later to write books about his idea of mind over body. He said, <laughs> he said it was mind over body. He said he did something that made him feel like he wasn't diseased. Oh, got you. So okay. the more he did it, the more he felt like he wasn't diseased. And he thinks that him changing his mind no, frame I know exactly what you're talking and also about. physically doing something he's like it cured me but I also because we ride horses so I was like oh he rode ponies <laughs> I almost cried because <laughs> no I know this woman who had like very severe cancer and she changed all of her eating habits to be like vegan and whatever and she truly like believed yeah she truly believed that it was going to save her and her cancer was gone mm -hmm. it was like stage three cancer Jeez. like she was going to die brad she changed what she was eating and believed it was going to change it and it was just gone brad said that somebody did a scientific study where they took a monk who's like a very high level monk and put him in a very cold and yeah i know exactly what you're talking about like without anything and to wear and he had like a heat a heat meter on him yeah so this is like and a, he created his own heat in this cold environment and just like complete mind over body yep. and was like <laughs> i'm warm i'm not actually in like a negative zero degree celsius like you could see him creating heat in mm -hmm. his body <laughs> yeah it's weird it's crazy so phineas quimby was the one that spurred the new thought movement kind of uh with his mind over body analysis the person that coined the term manifestation was Madame Helena Blavatsky. She is the woman who coined the term manifestation and she was a Russian author and spiritualist. She had books authored all throughout the world, not just America. Her teachings were what reached our shores and helped spur the New Thought movement and love, attraction, things like that. So before the New Thought movement, there was a movement called the Ancient Thought Movement. And this movement was noted for taking ideas from all over the world um chinese greek roman egyptian uh zaoist hinduism hinduism all of those types of ideas and thoughts and beliefs yeah. and made this ancient thought movement so helena blatsvatsky took her understanding of the ancient thought movement and revamped it and tailored it to the new thought movement creating manifestation and ideas like that. But a lot of manifestation ideas are found in Hinduism, but they're mm -hmm. also found in yeah. the Bible, which a lot of people don't like to talk about because they're like, it's witchcraft. But in the Bible, I believe it's Mark 11, 24, and it says, when you pray, pray as if the things you're praying for can come into existence or something like that. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's literally praying. Yes. Praying is manifestation. It is. But when I was doing all this research yesterday, there were so many things that popped up when I was looking up like what manifestation and things is. It was like why manifestation is magic and sorcery. And I'm like, but it's in the Bible. And it was all like it's Christian and Catholic think, religion things. People think it, don't think it's coming out of nowhere. They think it's coming from God. And because they have faith in God, that's why it happens because faith is so powerful. Well, yeah, but then why would they think that it's sorcery or magic? Because if they when say you take God out of the equation, they think that you're just getting it from like magic. Satan. Like they think it needs to come from somewhere. Oh, yeah. Helena Blatsvatsky was a super badass Russian lady. Did a whole bunch of authoring uh, of books, and she coined the term manifestation, and she used her ancient thought ideas to influence new thought ideas and released books all over the country, all over the continent. So so how does all of this mind over body, law of attraction, manifestation, hand gesturing things work? <laughs> I'm gonna let you know. So it has all to do with matter and the frequencies at which matter vibrates. You're thinking, 
what is matter? Matter is everything. It is Emily, it is our setup, it is this couch we're sitting on. Everything is made of matter. And matter is made up of molecules and molecules are made up of atoms. Maybe that's too specific of a thing, but I am gonna do it the Science right way. Science is crap. <laughs> I'm gonna do it the right way. We're gonna take magic away and tell you all of the science behind manifestation. <laughs> yes. So atoms, you know, protons, neutrons, electrons, things like that, they all make up molecules and matter, but those atoms vibrate at different frequencies. You learned in basic science that there are different types of matter. You have solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. What is the main distinguishing characteristic of the states of matter? It is the vibrational frequencies of which the atoms that make up that matter um, exist at. So if you have a liquid, all of those atoms are moving a little bit differently. If you have a gas, all of those atoms are moving like this because they have to do things so that they're really, really light. And if you have solid objects, all of those atoms are vibrating but very, very close and very, very tight together so that they make more solid objects. So manifestation deals with the frequencies at which those objects are vibrating at in their state. Yes? yes. But these frequencies aren't just solid objects, they Correct. can be your emotions. Your emotions control your own frequency because we're a conscious being. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> because I'm getting too stuck in the physical because I get excited about science. <laughs> well, it's still science-based. It is. We're just a conscious being, so we're different than a desk. <laughs> so like atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons make up frequencies and waves, like electrostatic waves Nobody really thinks about this. They think of it as more of a mechanical aspect, but your heart beats off of electrostatic waves. That's why they put EKGs on you, electrocardiograms. Oh, that <laughs> makes so much sense. So that's where all of your frequencies come from because your heart beats. Yes. So it literally beats the energy out of you. And then, oh, it's so cute, I can't do it. <laughs> and then what is your brain? Your brain is the receiver and it transmits those electrical impulses from your heart to create other types of stimulus, to move other types of matter. Oh, you just made my body turn into a computer. <laughs> my Virgo brain lives for it. This is what manifestation is all about. It's about the frequencies in which the world exists at. And if you can raise or lower your frequencies to match the frequencies of the things that you want to attract to yourself, the law of attraction, so we're using the law of attraction to create manifestation, then you can manifest the things that you want in your life. Mindful, you need to not be greedy about the things that you want. <laughs> because it's not about me, it's about bettering yourself, kind your of. Your consciousness. Yeah, just like how my mediumship doesn't work because people want something, it's because they need something. Manifestation is the same way. It's not because you want something, it's because you need something. Phineas Quimby didn't want to die of tuberculosis and he tried real god hard and he really kind of got what he needed. That is how manifestation works. Uh, I was reading something and it said that emotions, like M said, is a way that you manifest things or change your vibrational frequency uh, overall. So like imagine you have a bad day, your day starts out bad, you start talking to everybody that you interact with during that day and saying, my day was really bad. I spilled coffee on myself and then I tripped down a flight of stairs and that pigeon that was wearing a top hat gave me a dirty look. <laughs> what kind of emotions are that? Angry, spiteful, sad. Yeah, but you're putting that vibration out and that energy out. So it's going to come back. Yeah, so it's going to come back. So if you say I'm having a bad day today, it's going to be the whole day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bad things are just going to continue to happen to you. But if you change your emotional frequency and say, okay, I acknowledge that these things happen, but I'm going to envision the rest of my day going good. I'm gonna get the food that I want for dinner. There's not gonna be any traffic when I'm on my way home, all of this other stuff. Then those are the things that are more likely to attract to you throughout your day if you change your emotional state. Because that's the vibration that is attracted to you. One of the things that my mom does, and every time, every time, I tell you, every time, she envisions getting a parking space when we have to go to, to like Target of or something. She does. She's like, I'm going to manifest the best parking spot I've ever seen and because I'm time, me. Every time she gets a parking space right in the front. And sometimes she'll be like, 
on the phone not paying attention and then other times she'll be driving and you can tell she's just like I'm envisioning this parking space and it will be mine but then times she's like talking on the phone and not entirely putting all of her energy into it we will get to Target and we'll be driving to go look for a parking spot and I'm like you made it the station stuff didn't work because it's hokey mom someone will back out of a parking space wait for her and then she'll get that spot every time it makes me so angry i hate it i like how she uses manifestation for that yeah but it's <laughs> it's like it's just dumb things like i mean i guess it's not a need but it, i think i think that's the universe just thinking that it's funny at that point <laughs> so manifestation is putting that frequency out into the universe and trying to get that frequency back because like things attract. Same thing with like water molecules. Yeah. I won't get into that, but they want <laughs> more science. They want to find atoms that work cohesively with their molecular structure, so they That's why oil sits on the top. Yes. So yeah. that's why they find each other. So if you have something that will attract all of those happy things to you, they're going to be like, "I want to make the coolest molecular structure ever with you." <laughs> that's the universe. You could do it. Right. <laughs> so, emotions can be manifestation tools as well but you can also do physical manifestation. And that's where activities come in and vision boards. So we're gonna make a vision board for a business and I'm real excited about it. This is the top, because this is where I had it hanging okay. at home. Cool. So it goes this way. Okay. Papa squat. Wow, manifesto is something a little bit different but comes from the same word. So a manifesto is a published declaration that the issuers make about something that is already known, which would be the idea of manifestation. So we could punnily call this our manifestation manifesto and I'm really excited about it.